The next question we have here is dealing with chemotherapy. Are there certain cancers which are best treated with chemotherapy? And for that, I will uh, give it to you, Dr. Ettinger, as a veterinary oncologist. What are the best cancers that respond the best to chemotherapy? Well, the, the number one cancer that we treat almost exclusively with chemotherapy would be lymphoma, which is one of the more common malignant cancers um, in dogs and a very, very treatable um, cancer and one where chemotherapy makes a significant difference in the dog's life, not only from how long they live, um, but to the quality of life. And just a, a quick example, dogs with lymphoma without treatment in general sadly only live about a month. It's a really quickly a very rapidly progressive cancer, but with chemotherapy in which most dogs feel phenomenal and quite normal during treatment, they live um, over a year on average 13 or 14 months. So um, that's probably the number one, um, number one cancer that we treat exclusively with chemotherapy and a related cancer would be leukemia, which is cancer of the bone marrow. And again, that's another cancer that we treat with chemo. And then there are a lot of solid cancers, so cancers that start in one part of the body, but if they um, have a very high chance of spreading, um, typically chemotherapy will be recommended after the primary cancer is treated either with surgery or radiation. Um, so again, that's gonna be really um, important information to ask your veterinarian or an oncologist. If your dog has a solid cancer, that's a malignant cancer, does it have a high chance of spreading, and what are the chances that chemotherapy will delay that um, and have your dog live longer, which is everyone's goal. Dr. Dressler, when do you like to use chemotherapy? Well, I think after a, a good discussion with the guardian on the treatment plan analysis, and what I mean by treatment plan analysis, and we talk about this in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide, is a breakdown of what do you get compared to what does your dog put in and what do you put in. So it's almost like a bank account. You make deposits and you make withdrawals. So on the withdrawal side, we need to look and see, okay, if we're gonna be doing chemotherapy, what do we get? What's the gained life expectancy? And by gained life expectancy, we're saying, okay, here we have a dog, here's a typical life expectancy for this dog. And we talk about, again, the different life expectancies in the book. And we say, what do we gain from a certain chemotherapy protocol with this individual cancer? And as Dr. Sue was alluding to, different cancers respond more or less well to chemotherapy. So maybe we'll gain an extra so many months or however long it is, or a year or, or whatever. So it's gained life expectancy. And then we say, okay, what do we have to put into this? What do we have, what are the deposits that our dog is going to need to make and we're going to need to make? And by deposits, I'm talking about what does our special family member have to go through to receive the chemotherapy? And what do we have to go through, both in terms of the financial investment and also in terms of the time and logistic investment. So we need to have a clear idea of side effects, what the odds are, what the costs are, and what the commitment is, and what the lifestyle adjustment is on the part of, of the guardian and also of the loved dog. And then you, as an empowered uh, primary advocate for your, for your dog, you make the decision as to whether or not chemotherapy is the good choice. And I think there's a couple of things to add. You know, we all want our beloved dogs to be with us as long as possible. And a lot of people get very shocked when a veterinarian or oncologist says, you know, like I just said for lymphoma, that the average or the median survival is 13 to 14 months because that doesn't sound long enough to me for how long I want my dog to be with me. But you have to put it into perspective a couple of things. One is how long, again, is, as you know, Damien saying, will they live without treatment? Um, but again, also the over life, lifespan of our dogs. And you know, they don't live 70, 80, 90 years like people. In people, they often talk about five-year survival time. So a year or two um, you know, survival time for your dog's cancer um, is a significant chunk of time um, that your dog you know, may live with this cancer. And I think it's important to think of cancer sometimes as a chronic disease. We would all love to cure cancer, but again, a lot of times dogs can live with their cancer and live relatively normal lives. Um, they may require treatment long term, but again, you know, it may be something that they can live well with, and I think that's an important thing to remember. Well, when you talked about the 13 or 14 months, that was for a particular type of cancer, a particular type of chemo. Mm -hmm. Is that 
the average, what do you call it, extended life, the, the, the average amount of time that you get with chemotherapy, or is well, there an it, average? It's very, it's very cancer dependent. For lymphoma, that's the median. Um, you yeah. know, I have dogs with lymphoma. I just uh, had a dog that the owners um, found me on Facebook that I treated out in California, and that dog's out six years with lymphoma. So obviously that dog's on one end of the, of the spectrum, which is great. And then that, sadly, there are some dogs that are treated very, you know, aggressively and, you know, with the recommendations that an oncologist makes, and they may only live a couple of months. So these numbers are never written in stone, and uh, you always hope that your doctor's wrong in the sense that your dog's going to live longer than the than the statistics and I think statistics are just to give you a reasonable expectation but realize there are no guarantees and um, you know hopefully your dog will live beyond the statistics but it's very very cancer specific and I think that's again an important time to talk to an oncologist or a specialist and get the information that's specific to your bet your pet's cancer. Dr. Dressler, you alluded to making deposits and talking a little bit about money. Is there an average price tag if you decide to, to go with um, a traditional route like like, oncolo- like uh, chemotherapy? That's a little bit tough to answer uh, as with a single answer because it's going to depend on the cancer. It's going to depend on what the chemotherapy protocol is. And it's also going to depend on where you're located because veterinary prices and oncologist prices will vary depending on the geographic location because cost of living is different and, and these types of things. So there's going to be a lot of variability. Um, I would say that, you know, on the average, many thousands of dollars over the entire course of the chemotherapy would be you know, the magnitude of the expenditure. You know, when we talk about the, the sort of published numbers with conventional cancer care, you know, five to $8,000 for some combination of surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. You know, how much of that is going to be consumed by chemotherapy? Uh, well, that's gonna vary. So it's, a, you know, it's an excellent point that you bring up, Jim, because it's important to get an itemized estimate, and you know, it's an estimate, so it needs to be taken with some grain of salt, but of what is this going to be costing? Because it's not just the chemo drugs, you've got the monitoring, you know, you've got a little hospital stay, you've got catheters, fluids, you know, blood tests, whatever. These things can be built into the, to the treatment plan to give you an idea because you do have to budget for these things. And, you know, back to the idea of, of making deposits, what, what your dog, uh, the, the, the deposit your dog has to, to, to make, you know, is, all right, well, what about these side effects? And there are things that can be done and, and as Dr. Sue pointed out, the side effects are not what they are uh, compared to human chemotherapy. But nonetheless, there are some side effects that really do need to be contemplated here. And some of them can be severe. You need to be advised of those, the frequency of them. And also take some steps. When we talk about this in the guide, there are steps that one can do uh, uh, to deal with, to, to, to manage side effects. And we talk about this in the guide. So you really need to, to look at that. And also sometimes preemptively, uh, minimize side effects by getting information about your particular dog. There's, you know, a, a test that can be run called the MDR1 test. A mutant, uh, there's a genetic mutation that can increase the odds of side effects. There might be certain uh, heart conditions. There could be a tendency towards pancreatitis. Anyway, all of these things before you jump into chemo as much as you can need to be uh, uh, taken into account. So you go about this in a in an intelligent way and in a very very kind way. Uh, for for your loved dog. Dr. I, Dressler, in, oh, go ahead, Dr. Ettinger. No, I just want to add one quick thing. I think, you know, a lot of people, when I tell them what I do for a living, they just can't imagine dogs getting chemotherapy and they manage them, or they imagine them hooked up to, you know, injections for long periods of time. And, you know, most of my patients are outpatients. They come in weekly or every other week or every third week for their chemotherapy. They're in and out in about an hour to two on, you know, a good day, or they hang out with us during the day while mom and dad goes to work. And most of these patients really live well. They're doing all of their things that they really enjoy doing, going on walks, hiking, swimming, you know, with the family. Um, and most of these dogs are really living well. And most of the people look back and they say, gosh, you told me that, but I really couldn't imagine it. And I'm so happy that I did it. So I think chemotherapy is overwhelming reasonably for a lot of people because we think about people going through chemo. but. Most dogs just really tolerate treatment phenomenally well, and most people that decide to do it 
though it's not for everyone, are truly happy that they did. So if it's something that you're thinking about doing, go and talk to a specialist and find out more about your dog's cancer and the recommended protocol. I think it's going to be really helpful for everyone. There's lots more information on chemotherapy if you're considering that in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide. Dr. Ettinger in New York and Dr. Dressler in Hawaii, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks. Thanks.